Good morning. Welcome to the Risky Business Show on the Industrial Observer Network. As you can see today, I am alone. Typically, we try to have a guest on every show. And like any other project, small project, large project, you're always going to have a, flu a few glitches. And it's how you handle those glitches that determines success or not. So today, the show must go on even though we don't have a guest. So I want to talk about some of the things that trip up entrepreneurs. So with those thoughts in mind, let's pause for a minute and recognize our sponsor, Sports Medicine Concepts, right here. Take a look at their logo, flawless performance. I really love that. You can find them at sportsmedicineconcepts.com. They're all about injury preparation, injury, uh, what, what are you going to do when your top athlete goes down? How are you going to handle it? Uh, all those things that come in the sports world around preparation for the prevention and the handling uh, of injuries. So that's sportsmedicineconcepts.com. Check them out. So getting back to our theme for today, which is most entrepreneurs charge too little. And here's the trap that they run into. They, they look at it and they say, okay, this is what my time's worth. And oh, by the way, most people have no idea what their time's worth, which is a whole other subject we can talk about. They say, all right, this is what my time's worth. This is the cost of my materials. And I'm going to put 20% on it. And uh, I'm going to make some money. Well, Running a business that way, you're on your way to bankruptcy. The real thing they have to look at is all your cost, all your variable cost, all your fixed cost. And you also want to look at your variable cost as if they were fixed cost. And let me explain that. So your fixed cost are, are you know, your rent, uh, you know, any payment that is the same each month. Those are all your fixed costs. So you want to total all your fixed costs. Now your variable costs, hence the word variable, are up and down all over the place. But you really want to look at, for ease, look at them, pick your highest one and say, look, here's where my variable costs seem to top out all the time and, and add that in. And you, so when they do vary, they vary on the, on the lower side. And then you want to take those costs and those are the costs that you have to cover, no matter what. Those are the things that are commonly known as a burden rate. Those are the things that your business has to cover every month. So on top of that, you would put your cost of materials for a particular project. You would put in the time that you have. And then on top of all those things, you would put your profit. And in today's world, you pretty much, and outside of retail, you pretty much have to make a minimum of 35% no matter what you're doing. So if you don't know where you're going, put at least 35% on it. So here's a good rule, couple of rules of thumb that have served me well throughout my career. I figure everything up, if it's a large project and there's a lot of unknowns, I figure everything up to the best of my ability, everything I can think of. And I usually, I usually total everything up, set it aside, and I think about it, something else pops in my mind, I add it to the list. And when I come up with that figure, I multiply it times three. And you may be thinking, oh my goodness, you're probably not going to get that job. Which leads me to another rule of thumb. You have to accept you're probably going to lose anywhere from, I'll say, 50 to 65% of the projects that you quote. And that's okay. Because you've defined what it needs, what your needs are for your business to be profitable. And I know that you have to have business. But taking business for the sake of taking business is another trap. And we'll explore that uh, a little later during the program today. 
So you take that and you multiply, you take your, all your costs, all the knowns that you can, that you can list and factor in the rule of three for your unknowns. And that's what you go in with. And for some particular reason, the customer decides to go with somebody else, then I have to say that, and this is where I go, when I lose a project like that, I don't say my price was too high. I say I got outsold. Somebody did a better job. Because what I found out is that I've lost the project and my price was actually even lower. How did that happen? It's because I missed something. I didn't explain the benefits well. That's, that is the perspective that I take when I lose an order. So that rule, the rule of three, and I'm going to talk about why I love the number three uh, as we go through this, uh, has served me well. Another way that I look at it uh, on smaller jobs is I'll figure out all my costs. And on a smaller job, you have a better handle of, of getting uh, all your detailed costs down. Once I figure that all out, I divide it by 0.6, which gives me about 35, 40% uh, profit on a job. Now you have to remember, the profit is not to cover your operating costs. That's all covered in the formulation of the, of the number that you need to put the profit on top of. Profit is your reward for taking a risk. It's also what you need to grow the company. So when you think about adding new technology, adding new innovations to keep you competitive, that's gonna come out of that profitability that you add on, that, on the top of, of your proposal, that times three. And that's very important because a lot of customers, or excuse me, a lot of companies, entrepreneurs, they're rolling along. They think that they have, because they have money in their checking account, that they're doing okay when actually they're going out of business. And then one day they wake up and the marketplace has changed and whatever they're offering is obsolete. And you see that a lot in technology. You have the greatest whiz bang thing gone and you're out there and people are lining up to get it. Two years later, it's been, obs it's been obsoleted and uh, now you haven't done any, you don't have any money to ride through that storm so you can uh, revamp your business or you haven't done any innovation to keep up with the changes in the marketplace. So let's, let's back up a little bit. So charging too little for your services or your product, that, that is a trap. The other thing um, that I want to look at, and I mentioned it um, a few minutes ago, is taking work to get work, which is absolutely ridiculous. And let me give you a story from my past, how I fell into that trap. So I quoted uh, three pieces of custom machinery. And uh, the, actually it was only, it started out, it was one one piece of custom machinery. And what I did is I listed the cost, the cost of the machine, I put the engineering cost in there, and then I added my profit on top of it. Presented it to the customer. The customer liked what we had to say, except we were outside of their budget. And he said, the engineering cost seems a little high. And I said, well, it's a custom piece of machinery. There's a lot of engineering involved and we have to be able to recoup that engineering. So here's where I think I'm really smart at selling. And I said, is there an opportunity in the future where you're gonna need more machinery? And he said, yes, we're actually looking at buying a total of three. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, you write me an order for three pieces of machinery and I'll amortize the engineering costs across all three pieces of machinery and that'll bring it down. He says, great. 
Let's do that. So I figured, great, I'm a good salesman. I walked out of there, started out, the price was too high, ended up getting an order for three instead of one. Pat myself on the back. The order comes in the mail, and it's only for one. And the engineering cost is not included. So I called the engineer up and I said, what happened? And well, actually just a third of the engineering cost was included. I asked the engineer what happened. He says, well, I got it over to the purchasing and purchasing said, you know, we're not gonna do that. We're only gonna order one and then we'll turn around and we'll order another one and then we'll turn around and we'll order another one. And I'm like, well, okay, so here's the trap. I should have walked away from that. And you may be thinking, well, you know, it's, you're, you're gonna get the orders, you're just a little further down the road. What happened is, we did such a good job on that first piece of machinery, that engineer got a promotion. The new engineer came in, he had all the engineering specs on the machine, didn't take any effort on his part, he just requoted it. We had already built a machine, requoted it out to all my competitors who didn't have to do any engineering. And I didn't get the remaining two. And I lost my tail on the first one. You see it a lot in the contracting world where a contractor will take a job just to keep busy. And then another job comes down the road that he's making money on, but he's got a backfill on the money he lost on that job. He's already, gone, he's already out of business and he doesn't know it. So pricing your products and services too low, that's a trap. Taking work for the sake of taking work, big trap. The other thing I want to recognize is our other sponsor, which is Sterling Innovations Group. So go in, take a look at Sterling Innovations Group, uh, their website. They're, they are a unique company and, um, in that they've been around a while and they do a lot of things. It's a hybrid organization. It's a little bit innovative in the way they approach the marketplace. So you can find them, and here's a big hint on who owns the company. You can find them at jamesindoma.com, or you can find them at sterlingig.com. I'd really appreciate it if you go in, look at our brand new website during this last year with all the, uh, the downtime that we had with the pandemic. I said, what do I need to do to come out of the shoot ready for 2021? And I've been thinking about revamping my website so we did that and it'll give you a real flavor for some of the things that that we do different and you also see in the verbiage in the website some of the same things that i talk about so another another trap that uh, entrepreneurs fall into is advertising advertising is the, your advertising dollar is one of the most wasted dollars in the business world. Every dollar that you spend on advertising, you should be able to loop it right back to an opportunity to quote something or even an order. So during our last podcast, we talked about what is advertising? You know, what is the role of advertising? So advertising has one role, and that is to let people know who you are, what you do, and where they can find you. And it has to be done in an entertaining way. Advertising has to be entertaining so people remember you. So when you spend a dollar on advertising, and oh, this just breaks my heart when I work with entrepreneurs and they'll say, I just bought $10,000 worth of TV advertising. And I'm thinking, well, that's great. You know, big ego trip. You get to see yourself on TV or YouTube, but you get to see yourself on TV. How are you going to track 
that. There's no way to track that dollar, that advertising dollar. So a simple way, and you hear this on the radio all the time, you'll hear in advertising and it'll say, put promo code James Sindoma up in the box and you'll get a discount. That, and you say, great, I'll remember to do that. What that tells the company owner is how his advertising is doing. So he can go in and he can check how many people use the promo code and he can say, okay, I advertised on, you know, WKRP and, and uh, I got a great response. So that was a good use of my advertising dollar. The other thing you have to be concerned about in the entrepreneurial world is discounts. You have to be very, very careful because when you start discounting, you're actually giving away your margin. So that 35, 40% margin that we talked about at the beginning of this conversation, when you're discounting to get an order, you're chopping away. And there's all kinds of hidden things that just eat up your margin that, that you don't know about. So you're out there trying to get an order and the customer says, you know, I need, and I need to get a 20% discount for my budget. And we've already said you need to dig in and guard your margin. So your response should be, you can earn a discount rather than just giving them a discount. You say, and the customer would say, how can I earn a discount? Well, that's where you say, up the volume of the order, or instead of ordering one, order three, order 10, whatever it is you need to get the discount on the other end. Still guarding your margins. To offer a discount just to get an order, a discount is not a sales closer. It's just a trap. So you, you want to keep that in mind. And I got a really great story to share with that. But before I get into that, I want to recognize our other sponsor, was, which is XSP, which is Extreme Shale Performance. And when you hear that, you might think, shale, they're not in the rock business. They're in the oil and gas business. And a lot of the energy that you use in your home, that little blue flame that I like to kid around about, that comes out of the shale formation uh, in the earth. And there's a process that they use to, to extract that, and it requires a lot of equipment. And that's what Extreme Shale Performance does. It keeps that equipment up and running so that you can have a nice, cozy home in the wintertime and uh, cook your meals uh, all year long. So check them out, extremeshaleperformance.com. Um, they also do some other services, which are the three R's, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So we got to roll back and share with you a story in which I quoted some equipment. I did everything that I'm proposing to you today. I figured out all my costs and I put a big number on it. And he calls me up and says, we really want to get this equipment. We need this equipment. And that's another thing. Focus on the customer's needs, not their wants. Ignore their wants. Their wants will get you in trouble. Focus on the needs and the wants will take care of themselves. And we could do a whole show about that. So the customer says to me, I really want to give you an order, but you're outside of our budget. What about a discount? And I said, well, you can earn a discount. And he said, how can I earn a discount? And this, where, this is where it pays to do your homework. Now, this particular piece of equipment was going to end up in one of the plants. And in doing my due diligence for this particular project, I found out that there were three more plants, total four. So I said to him, what are the chances that your sister plants are gonna need this equipment. 
And he says, oh yeah, this is the first one. If this one works out, we're gonna, we're gonna order, order four more. And I said, I'll tell you what, if you can secure an order for four, I will give you a discount. And I said, let me know. So basically what I did is I turned him into a salesman for me, for all the other plants. So he came back and he said, we're gonna order four of these. And I said, it has to be an order for four. It has to come through. I, I learned that lesson on the last project. I said, I will not accept an order for anything less than four units. And then I'll pass along a discount. Now, here's where every project has a glitch in it. And how things, and this is what I mean about protecting your margin. So I get this order. Again, I'm patting myself on the back because I think this is great. Started out, again, order for one, pricing a little high, outstanding salesmanship, turned it into an order for four. One of those plants was in China. And this equipment was computer driven. So when we shipped the equipment from the US to China, China sent the computers back. They just showed up at my office because of their import rules. All their computers, all their computer driven equipment has to have computers from China. They don't import any software or hardware in the computer world or very limited. So now, <clears throat> Here's the deal. And this, again, this is how orders can get screwed up. And there, so I called up and I said, hey, uh, you're overdue. And he says, well, the deal was that we wrote you an order for four, four, but we're not paying you until we get all four of them. We only have three of them are up and running and the fourth one is in China. So now what do I do? Now I got a huge cash flow problem. And that little Pac-Man is eating away at my margin. Just eating away at it. So what I ended up doing is I ended up working through a broker in California. I ended up getting a rep in China to go over and handle this for me. Now, the broker in California took a chunk of my margin. The rep in China took a chunk of my margin. Can you imagine if I would have given away 20% to get the order? That would be nothing left for me. As it turns out, I did okay because I built in a big enough margin. It wasn't great, but I made money on the deal. And the point here is there's so many hidden things that will pop up after a project gets rolling. You have to guard your margins with your life. That's another trap. Another, another trap is pricing your products and services after the competition. Who says the competition is doing a good job? You can follow them right into bankruptcy court. So... Pay little attention to where your competition is pricing. Don't get wrapped up in saying, oh, my, my competition's here, so I'm going to come into the marketplace 10% less and, and, and get a chuck of their business. That is trap thinking, and a lot of entrepreneurs fall into that. You really have to know what all your costs are, cover all your costs, Put that profit margin on there so you can go and sustain your business. So you can discount your way right into bankruptcy court. You can follow your competition uh, right into bankruptcy court. So these are all rules that uh, can, can help you stay out of trouble um, as, an, as an entrepreneur. Now, I want to take a break a minute because on the way up... Mm. When I found out we weren't going to have a guest, I actually started making a list of things I wanted to talk about today. So we talked about uh, 
pricing trap. We, I also want to talk about, um, you know, promoting your company. So when you're out promoting, and so the difference between advertising and promotion, if you look it up in the dictionary, the dictionary will say they're the same. And there's a joke in, that I like to share, and that is, what's the difference between advertising and promotion? Advertising you pay for, promotion is free. So promotion is when you do such a great job that your customers start telling their friends and relatives about what you do because their experience with you was so great and they recommend you, your company, to them. That's promotion. How do you get that, how do you overcome that inertia and get people talking about you and your products? And that is to do an exceptional job and earn the right to ask your customer for a testimonial or a reference or to ask them if there's an opportunity, they may come back. Say, look, I know you're going to need some more material in the future. When you come back, bring me a new customer, excuse me, bring me a new customer, a new client, and you'll earn a discount. And that's how you start. Here again, discounts are rewards for customer behavior not to close an order. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, you want people to be wowed by what you do. And so I'm going to leave you with this thought. When you've earned the right, when, you've, when you know that you've done such a great job and you've wowed your customer, please ask for a testimonial. Ask them to promote your business. And with that, it's risky business. We're out.